They warned you the river would rise. They never said it would remember. Floods aren't just weather. They're memory made liquid. Every droplet that falls carries the past. Every drowned city. Every storm that once had a name. And when water comes for you, it doesn't roar first. It whispers, let me in. Level 1. It starts quietly. One raindrop on the window pane. Soft, unthreatening, rhythmic. The smell of petrichor crawls through the air. The soil exhales relief. You tell yourself it's nothing, just weather. But water is patient. Each drop invites the next. Gutters overflow, streets glaze, the earth begins to glisten like skin after fear. On sensors, humidity spikes. In you, so does unease. Because floods never announce themselves, they accumulate. This is the threshold of ignorance. When people scroll their phones, joke about the rain, and think roofs are higher than nature. Meteorologists see the signs, a stalled front, rising sea surface temperatures, pressure collapse. But humans live by denial. We call disaster a bad day. Every storm starts like a promise, gentle enough to believe. Level 2. The rain doesn't stop. It thickens. Drains choke on leaves. Soil liquefies. You feel it first underfoot. That sponge-like give when the ground forgets how to be solid. The air grows heavy, charged with ions. Static whispers between raindrops. Power lines hiss. Dogs bark at nothing. Somewhere beneath the asphalt, water knocks. Gentle at first, then harder. This is where hydrology turns poetic and cruel. Saturation point. Percolation failure. The moment gravity realizes there's nothing left to hold. You see puddles forming mirrors that don't reflect right, as if they're looking up at you, waiting. The city smells of iron and wet dust, a funeral scent for dry ground. You should move higher, but you don't. Humans always wait for the alarm, forgetting water is the alarm. It's not the sky that breaks first, it's the ground. Level 3. Street gutters turn to streams, streams turn to veins, veins turn to arteries cutting through the city's skin. The water now moves with intention, snaking around corners, carrying branches, plastic bags, bits of home. You hear the low thrum of stormwater sewers filling beyond capacity. That sound, deep and metallic, is the city gasping. Hydrodynamics calls the sheet flow phase, where surface water spreads evenly, thin but fast, seeking every dip. Psychologically, it's the moment denial breaks. People start filming, posting, joking through fear. Cars stall in waist-deep currents that look like puddles from afar. Basements become aquariums for furniture and photos. If you're inside, you feel vibration through the floor as the earth begins to move with it, a heartbeat that isn't yours. If you're outside, you start to see the world in reflections, as though you've slipped beneath the surface and forgotten to breathe. Floods don't rise, they collect you. Level 4. By now, water has found its rhythm. It moves like a living thing, with pulse, with direction, with intent. This is the moment engineers call hydraulic failure and survivors call terror. The flow is no longer random, it's organized chaos. Every street a tributary, every alley a throat. You hear objects colliding beneath the surface, trash cans, bikes, doors, all turn to driftwood. The sound is deceptively human, like footsteps running under the water. Lightning flashes and for a moment the whole landscape is a mirror, then darkness again, except for the occasional car light, moving like a trapped soul beneath the surface. Science says the water velocity doubles with each inch of depth. Emotion says it's already unstoppable, and in that moment you realize the flood isn't outside anymore. More. It's inside. Your walls, your voice, your breath. Panic arrives in waves too. Adrenaline spikes. Decision making fails. Vision tunnels. You move slower in water, but think faster in fear. A cruel imbalance. From above, it looks beautiful. A city of glowing water, reflecting lightning like a cracked galaxy. From below, it's hell. Cold, opaque, endless. When the water learns your name, it stops calling you human. Level 5. There comes a point when sound stops carrying. The air is too thick with moisture. Noise is swallowed whole. This is the drowned silence, the moment flood and sky become the same color. You can't tell what's cloud and what's water, what's reflection and what's real. Electricity is gone. The hum of civilization, the fridge, the buzz, the engine, all replaced by the steady inhalation of rain. The world has gone back to its default sound, water on water. For those still inside their homes, the psychology changes. They no longer fight the flood, they bargain with it. They move valuables higher, speak to the walls like friends, and promise the themselves the rain will stop soon. It won't. At this depth, currents run through living rooms, carrying toys, candles, family photos. Every object floats like evidence of denial. There is no more running water because all water is running. There is no more line between inside and out. You've become an island inside a house built on memory. Then comes the moment when the walls shift, not collapse, shift. A groaning sound like the earth deciding something. You look at the ceiling and realize there's no more up left. Flood victims often describe this as the quiet 
quiet hour, when the rain softens but the water keeps rising, the illusion of relief is the cruelest gift of all. In that hush, you can hear a new sound, the deep base of pressure building beneath you as soil and foundation give way. The planet breathing through its lungs of mud. This isn't water anymore, it's the world remembering it was ocean. Level 6. What drowns you isn't above, it's underneath. Beneath the calm surface, another world moves. You can't see it from rooftops or rescue boats, but it's there. The undercurrent, silent and ancient. Down below the flooded streets, the water crawls through subway tunnels, basements, drainage veins. It doesn't rush, it hunts. Every object it touches becomes an anchor, a fragment of memory drifting toward the same dark mouth. Divers call it black water, where visibility drops to inches, where each breath tastes metallic and wrong. Inside it, sound bends, time slows. You kick, but the pull is gentle, almost affectionate. It feels like being invited somewhere. Hydrodynamics says it's simple pressure differentials. The mind calls it seduction, because the undercurrent isn't chaos, it's direction. The flood has remembered its purpose, to return what was borrowed. Bodies, houses, names, all debts being collected. In this darkness, fish from rivers miles away appear in living rooms. Eels slip through windows, and drowned trees rise upright. Roots first. Everything that was ever water is finding its way home. You tell yourself it's still raining, but rain doesn't whisper. Something underneath does. Level 7. Still water lies. Moving water decides. The storm has circled back. What you thought was ending was only the inhale. Now comes the exhale. The surge. Walls buckle. Dams burst like veins splitting open. From space, satellites record the coastline redrawing itself in real time. From the ground, it feels like the planet is turning over in its sleep. Tidal waves rise from rivers that never met the sea. Cars fold like paper. Bridges twist. Whole towns lift off their foundations and drift. Slow, stately, obedient to physics and fate. This is the level of hydraulic dominance, where human engineering ceases to matter. No levy, no gate, no nameplate survives. Only direction does. The surge has intelligence. It flows not where it's weakest, but where memory is strongest. It revisits valleys carved a thousand years ago, filling the ghosts of ancient lakes. Satellite imagery shows patterns identical to prehistoric coastlines. The Earth's muscle memory in motion. People trapped in upper floors describe an odd stillness between crashes, the seconds when pressure equalizes and everything hangs in suspension. In that pause, the world is weightless. Then, reality slams back. You realize that floods don't erase maps. They reveal older ones. Level 8. Night. The lights are gone. Only moonlight scattered across a surface that used to be land. You are in level 8. Submergence. This is not about drowning. It's about belonging. When the world is entirely underwater, perspective flips. Up and down switch rolls. Sky becomes a mirror. The mirror becomes an abyss. Divers describe the sensation of neutrally buoyant peace. The illusion of flying in slow motion. Survivors feel it too, just before panic. Because at this depth, the body stops fighting. Instinct yields to awe. The mind drifts toward hallucination. You see lights below you. Cities glowing through murk that shouldn't exist. They pulse like bioluminescent lungs. Maybe they're reflections of lightning. Maybe they're something older. Some call this the drowned memory. A collective hallucination shared across disaster zones. People separated by continents describe the same thing. Submerged architecture. Bell towers ringing beneath the sea. Voices echoing through water like sonar prayers. Geologists explain it as auditory distortion. Mythologists call it the return of Atlantis. Psychologists call it dissociation. But none of them can explain the feeling that the water is watching back. At this level, oxygen deprivation meets transcendence. You are both terrified and tranquil. The border emotion of existence. When the world sinks, heaven just moves lower. Level 9. Far below visibility, there's a silence that isn't empty. It's recording. Every molecule of water retains vibration. Science proves it on small scales. Acoustic memory, wave persistence. But here, it feels personal, like each ripple stores a name. The deep memory is where the flood stops being an event and becomes an archive. The currents slow to a crawl. Suspended debris drifts like thoughts. If you listen, you hear fragments. Not sound, but sensation. The warmth of sunlight on childhood rivers. The laughter of those long dead. The echo of sirens, swallowed whole. In this pressure, even thought feels liquid. You think of someone, and the water answers with their face. Not a vision, an impression, formed by bubbles, silt, shadow. Every loss you've ever felt floats past you, perfect and unreachable. Deep sea explorers call the same phenomenon acoustic mirage. Distant vibrations mistaken for voices. But how do you explain those voices saying your name? At this level, the flood isn't external anymore. It's a total environment. Physical, emotional, spiritual. You are inside the memory of water itself, and somewhere in that infinite database, you realize the truth. The flood didn't invade the world. The 
world was always the flood, and you were the dry interruption. Level 10. The storm ends. No rain, no thunder, only light, soft, silver, and endless. You are floating in stillness so vast it feels holy. The surface stretches forever. No horizon, no shore. Sky and sea have merged into one quiet entity. This is level 10. The calm sea. The final stage. The world's reset heartbeat. Everything that was chaos becomes symmetry. Currents fade. Debris sinks. Reflections steady. The planet exhales through mist and morning light. You drift. Weightless. Not cold. Not warm. Just suspended. Between memory and meaning. Here, water no longer punishes. It forgives. All the destruction. All the fear. All the noise. Washed away into equilibrium. Scientists call this the post-inundation equilibrium phase. When groundwater and atmosphere equalize. Mystics call it the afterflood. The day the sea rests. In that silence, you realize something hauntingly simple. The flood didn't destroy the world. It cleaned it. What remains will start again. Smaller, softer, humbler. You close your eyes and hear no sirens, no thunder, only heartbeat-like waves, each one softer than the last. And in the rhythm, you hear the first drop again. You open your eyes, rain against a window, just weather, you tell yourself. But somewhere deep in the soil, under the pipes and stones, the ground remembers the shape of yesterday's river. And when the next cloud passes, it will trace that shape again. Because floods don't end. They pause. Every drop that touches Earth rehearses the same story, rising, claiming, quieting, waiting. So when you hear thunder next time, don't look at the sky. Look at the ground. It's listening. The sea left once. It can find the way back.